so uh, another video and what i want to do is to change the heat sink on the honeycomb so what you're looking at uh, is the inside of the honeycomb i've made some changes and more mess since uh, i've last used it um or even like showed it here so there are a few things are uh, different like i have a new gpu in here that's the uh, radeon rx 560 um performance wise it's fine there are some bugs in mesa that still like have weird black clouds and on on mine test and and some other issues on um other tests but like i'm not too bothered about that uh it's fine for the most part open cl runs um from mesa clover and other interesting stuff like that so yeah so the rx5 um 60 is in works fine um but the heat sink is a big problem because it's kind of insufficient for um for this board so we are going to do a few tests we are going to turn it on try it out on the stock heat sink see how far the temps go uh and then add the larger larger is like a competitive term um this is the heat sink i'm going to go with um so add that heat sink in um and this has a lot more mass lot more surface area so it should cool fine if the cooling is not still up to what i want um I have a beefy fan that I'll use now that it will be loud but I'm trying I'm, I'm thinking of taking the chance so this is 20 20 CFM fan I don't even have the proper screws for it so we'll see how it goes um, on if it's even possible to mount but that's like for later on for now um, we'll try once with the fan I'll, th I'll show you how the thermal shutdown works uh, because if you take the fan out it just shuts down um, again yes it's arm yes it's power efficient but it is going to produce heat there's 16 cores in there that all run at 2.2 2.3 gigahertz in my case all the time so not big surprise that it needs a fair bit of cooling um, yeah so yeah let's turn it on and see how it works uh apart from the main the, the small cpu fan i have a large 120 mil on both sides so there's a good enough airflow uh in the entire case especially with the gpu I'll maximize it to a bit and so here you can do this glass thermals and uh, thermal zone and temp so you can put that to watch that will update every second and then I can just run stress uh, the time let's just do it for two minutes I think that should saturate it four minutes uh, so for four minutes that should be fine um and all 16 cores all right so folks second stress test starts now and we'll see how high the temps to go we've already reached 71 at few cores so again this is with the stock heat sink so we are hitting 76 at max um Looks like it's staying at 76. Oh, 77 on one core. I think it'll just equalize around 78 as usual. And you know, stress might not be the best tool for it, but I just need like a comparable benchmark to whatever new heat, uh, heat sink I install.
and we have 78 on one of the cores 79 that's a new high and yeah so i could have probably cooked it up to 70 or like maybe low 80s if i would have run it for like 10 minutes but that's that's a fine benchmark for me to try and see what changes there are um right the next thing i want to do is to simulate what happens if there's no fan so i'll shut it down uh remove the fan header and uh, re retry it and see uh, and show you guys what happens i'm pretty sure i can't just yank it out while the system is running i really don't want to do that but yeah okay so the fan header is out now i'll turn back on and see how bad the situation is you can see no fan um, on the heatsink, but there's like it's already very warm to touch. Uh, nothing on the display so far. No, there it is. I have honeycomb booting up. So once again, I'll have the same setup and try it out. See what the temps are. So it's already reaching 90s, uh, which is kind of crazy. And that's, that's why you need the fan and the heat sink. Um, and this is like at zero load So if I run stress It should just hang and there you go, so Yeah, it reaches 100 and then bad things happen and it goes shut down um, Yeah so that's without fan let's take everything out and see how it all fits all right so this is the compute module and we need to take get rid of that's it from the back uh with the connectors there and passives so now to get rid of the um, heat sink just push on these tabs here and this one's a bit too close to the connector but should be fine there you go, nice amount of thermal goop. I don't blame them for that. But yeah, looks like this heatsink just wasn't it. Uh, right now to clean that mess, give you folks a good look at the CPU because I didn't do it at the first time, just anticipating that I'd need to change the cooling solution at, at a later date. But yeah, let's wipe, wipe this off and And there you go, that's the main SOC. Um, yeah. So the next problem, I want to call it a problem, is that this thing fits fine, but it has its own uh, thermal compound and other stuff that I don't want to use. I have better one. So 
a i'll need to remove and clean whatever this outer thing they have added and that will of course have I, I'll, I'll have issues with it so let's do that let's move this cm out of the way for a second and look at this all right so at least let's attach the heat sink and we'll care about the fan later I hope that's enough all right so heat sinks on at least uh, took a bit of fighting with the um, with these because these won't fit for whatever reason and they just like came off for the fan I have decided to either just use zip ties and just Face it like that. So, yeah, this is the uh, super high CFM fan that I was planning on using, but no, it just looks weird, and I don't think this is the right use case for this fan. Uh, I love this fan though, but I'll just stick with, uh, with the with the original fan, and then you know, whenever I get an octo, I'll get an octo. All right, there it is done. Um, so, <laughs> yep, zip ties and all looks fun. All right, so um, yeah, the new heatsink is in um, with the old fan, and let's just try to get this working and see how far we get in terms of thermal improvements I'm hoping for quite a lot but let's see what where we get uh, nothing's fried up yet stuff powered on waiting for ghost Hello. Yep, there we go. We have ghosts and 
let's see what sort of improvements we get I'm guessing our thermals in terms of uh, just n not on any load would be about the same Wait, why are my bash why are the bash histories gone wow okay Uh, right so it's sitting around 50s which is fine doesn't tell us much Let's run stress for four minutes on all cores and see what the temps are. So 60 was pretty quick. Fan hasn't ramped up as much. And of course you guys can hear a lot of the fan stuff because you know the environment so noisy uh, that will probably just go away in uh, background noise but for the time being the heat sinks doing pretty good um, 64 is the max And has started to ramp up a little bit. And now it's down again. Hmm. Seems to be stable at 67 at the hottest zone. So I'm happy, like, yeah, um, success. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to end it here. Um, looks like it's pretty stable at 67. Um, I'll let it go. I'll add an annotation if it goes beyond 67. But this looks happy enough. And, um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching it was fun fiddling around with the actual compute module uh, not sure if i'll do that again um you, you kind of have to take the entire setup apart and to like have the correct way to uh remove and install reinstall the uh, compute module back um but yeah it was a fun experience i've got some um temp gains um much higher thermal headroom and much quieter operation uh oh 68 on one core all right that's uh oh, it was only there for a second um yeah and and like the test is done i'll probably run it for another thousand seconds no not thousand but like let's go 480 let's go like eight minutes and see if that's okay of course i'll, I'll like I won't take everyone for a ride, um, but we'll just end it here. Uh, looks like it's good enough. I have to put it in a permanent home where I can easily access it as a desktop computer. So that's the next step. Uh, but for the most part, it's working fine and I'm happy with the way it's operating at the moment. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, learned a bit if you have a um, honeycomb as well uh, if not i hope the visuals were appealing enough so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye